Hello everybody and welcome to my review of Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Valerian is directed by French director Luc Besson who is best known for films like Lucy, uh, The Professional, and The Fifth Element. And this film has a very Fifth Element kind of vibe to it. Uh, the film did a horrible performance at the box office. The film was made for above 160 or 170 million dollars. I only know the rough figure, sorry and it only managed to break around 16 million in its first weekend and reviews were not so great but let's get straight to my review of the film right now so i'm going to start by talking about the things that i liked about valerian and one of the things i absolutely liked about valerian were the visuals uh, the visuals are kind of cheesy and because the entire film has kind of a cheesy feel to it the visuals are therefore also very cheesy uh, but coming back to the cheesy point later uh, let's just talk about the visuals I really like the visuals in this film. The character designs in this film were very well done. Even though they are character types of characters that we've seen before in films like Star Wars, Star Trek, and all that, but we got to see new different sort of characters and I really enjoyed seeing those characters. They had really good details, really good features that I enjoyed seeing and the landscapes and just the world building that this film was able to do was absolutely great. So that comes to my second point about this film is that they did a really great job of, uh, of world building in the film. You know, we got to see this sort of intergalactic space world where um, there are these so many different universes, so many different alien species. Um, knowing the fact that this came before a lot of other things like Star Wars and Star Trek and all that, um, you know, it's the original. It's definitely something I give credit for, but Personally, as, an, as a modern audience, we've seen this kind of thing now over and over again. So it does feel a little bit rep repetitive at this point, but I still do think that the film did an excellent job of just uh, producing a world with endless uh, and limitless possibilities and just creating a world around that. And I think that uh, director Luc Besson had a very good sense of the film's tone also in that regard, in that he understood that the film is meant to be cheesy. And this is something I respect Luc Besson for, is just knowing the tone of the film beforehand. And he did a great job of just knowing that this is a cheesy film and there's no need to be too self-serious about the film. And I like the fact that in the rest of the film and uh, in most of the film, it never got self-serious. It stayed lighthearted and fun, which I absolutely liked about this film. Um, but again, these are just some of the few good things about the film. And let's get straight to the criticisms because I have a lot of criticisms about this film and it ended up bogging this film down quite a bit. Let's talk about the acting in this film, the cast, um, because let's be honest, it was a problem I saw from the very first trailer in this film. Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne. Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne star in this sci-fi film. Um, so let's just go one by one. Dane DeHaan, have I liked the guy before? No. And I think most mainstream audiences would agree that his role that he's most known for, which was the Green Goblin in Amazing Spider-Man 2, was just terrible and I didn't think his acting was any good part of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, has he been known for good indie films and good indie performances? Yes, I have not seen those films so I can't say. Uh, in this film he was absolutely atrocious. In fact he was much worse than Cara Delvine, in my opinion and I am like the last person to say that I'm a big fan of Cara Delvine. I mean Dane DeHaan was just so boring in this film. He was just trying so hard yet being so boring. He was trying to be like the big hero guy and it was just pathetic to see sometimes on screen the way he had to try so hard to display a charismatic hero. Do I think Dane DeHaan could probably do well in other kinds of roles? Yeah, I could see him doing well in other kinds of roles and people say he's done good in other kinds of roles, but he was terrible for this role. I don't know what the casting directors were thinking about when they casted Dane Han in this film. He was absolutely atrocious for me and an absolute pathetic performance from him. I can't believe he wasn't able to even bring out a smidge of charisma. And I feel that if they had replaced Dane Han with any other actor in the world, you could have gotten a better performance. So now moving on to Cara Delevingne. I saw her in Suicide Squad. She was a poorly written character. I mean, Enchantress was a poorly written character. So I felt it would be bad to judge her acting skills upon that, although she brought no life to that character at all. So I wasn't really expecting much from her going into this film. And she's not really an actress. She's only done a couple movies. I think despite this performance from her being pretty bad, it was 
probably one of her better performances, and I think she's kind of getting better at the acting thing, although even this performance is truly bad. I mean, she at least brought a little bit more charisma than Dane DeHaan, but still, there was no subtlety in her acting, especially in the emotional scenes. It felt very forced a lot of the time, and it just, it wasn't there for me. And despite the fact that, you know, we have these two main leads who are supposed to have so much charisma, and I'm now talking about Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan, both, there was no chemistry between these two. There were only a few moments of chemistry, and that brings me to my next point, the dialogue. Oh my god, that's all I can say. Oh my god, the dialogue in this movie is hilariously bad. I had a really fun time listening to the dialogue in this film because it was so, so bad. Uh, I'm not going to spoil any of the amazingly funny dialogue in this film, and funny for all the worst reasons. It is such poorly written dialogue. And, you know, someone who's seen a film like Social Network, which was written by Aaron Sorkin, I really believe that dialogue should be one of the most main driving things in a film. And I've always been a great advocate and always tried to look for good dialogue in films. And I've of course realized recently that dialogue in films is kind of not that good recently. It's kind of going down and this is the lowest point of dialogue that I've seen. It is so clumsily written and just terrible in every regard that I almost laughed out loud almost every time that Dane DeHaan spoke to Cara Delevingne. It was absolutely hilarious dialogue in the, for, again, the worst reasons ever. It was just clumsy, not well thought out. There were moments that were supposed to be funny but never led up to the actual pun or the joke or the punchline. It just fell flat for me completely and the dialogue in this film was uber disappointing but it was great for a good laugh because it was very, very funny, again, for all the wrong reasons. So, going to the screenplay of this film, um, I have two things to say about the screenplay. One's good, one's bad. Uh, the good thing is um, that the film's screenplay allows for a lot of world building. Um, you know, you get to see lots of different characters, lots of different cities in this kind of galaxy world that we've been introduced to. I love the station, alpha station, city thing. Um, so there was a lot of that good stuff. But the actual screenplay and what happens throughout the movie really strays away from the main plot um, a lot. In fact, sometimes it feels like I had to think when I was watching the movie where this fits into the movie and then realized, hey, it doesn't actually even fit into the main plot. And that happens a lot throughout this film. And it kind of sometimes feels like the director, Luc Besson, is just kind of pulling things out of thin air and just trying to make a movie out of it, something and try to fill up little gaps in the movie. Um, but really, it just had nothing to do with the plot most of the time. Again, though, at the same time, while you're watching those sequences, they are somewhat fun sequences to watch, even though they have nothing to do with the plot, because you're getting to see these different characters, these different worlds, these different cities, and the CG is done very well, so you're enjoying the visual treat, but there's nothing to do with the plot. So the, sometimes the film can feel like a little bit like it's just pulling at straws and not really going anywhere. And that's actually what it is doing. It's not really going anywhere for most of the time. You're just kind of seeing this world. So in general, the film doesn't really feel like it is a film, like a whole cinematic viewing experience. It just kind of feels like you are watching this world being set up for potentially another sequel or something. And that's kind of what the film feels like a lot of the time. Um, but there are some fun action sequences in this film. And the use of CG, again, is pretty good. But the screenplay just kind of strays away. The dialogue is terrible. The acting is atrocious. And now we come to the editing. Great. Visibly bad editing. Yes, this film also suffers from that ailment that many other films do. Uh, there's one particular sequence where there was an action sequence going on where a character was speaking but he couldn't finish speaking before it was cut to another action sequence and literally they had to overlay what he was saying over that next action sequence. That's how bad the editing is in this film a couple of times. Um, it's not very frequent that the editing is bad in this film, but it does happen several times. Um, so that really bogged the film down for me. However, I think you can actually have fun with this movie. Now hear me out. The visuals are good, some of the uh, action sequences are exciting, 
but you can also kind of have fun with how bad this movie is almost i think it could end up going cult classic mode because some of it is the so bad it's good the dialogue is hilarious like i said and just seeing Cara Delvin and Dane DeHaan acting in a sci-fi movie is something to behold, honestly, even though it's atrocious. And the screenplay does allow for some world building, even though it's scattered. So I think it's kind of the half good, half so bad it's good kind of a movie. But uh, critically speaking, the film does have a lot of falters. But again, as I said, you know, I think you can have fun with how bad it is sometimes. Um, in general, though, I'm going to give Valerian a B- minus from me. Um, I think it does deserve a little bit more credit than it's currently getting. I think it could have been a better box office success. I'm not sure why uh, more people aren't at least checking it out. I think it's because so many other different films came at the same time. But I think you can have fun with it. But critically speaking, again, it's kind of a mess. Uh, I'm going to give Valerian B plus, B minus, as I said earlier. And um, that's all I have for you guys today. I uh, hope you guys at least kind of check out Valerian, see if you're interested in it. I think it deserves, again, a little bit more attention. I um, hope to have more movie review talk for you guys soon. And that's all, guys. Thank you for watching.